Hello, everybody. Hi, welcome to our new webinar. Um, we are going to, to talk uh, about the uh, uh, the many challenges that we marketers are facing when we try to prove the impact of our marketing campaign's effectiveness on our business growth. And I'm not alone to talk about that. Uh, Camille Borodi is here with me, another fellow marketer. Hi, Camille. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, Camille is here uh, with us today to share her own experience and and uh, and story on implementing and streamlining um, um, a better way to to analyze marketing data uh, across different channels. Um, so we have quite an, an agenda today, and I see people still joining in. Um, while people are joining, I want to make sure that everyone can see and hear us uh, properly. Um, if you have any issues during the webinar, you can um, post a, um, I'll, you know, uh, give me a sign in, in the chat just to make sure that uh, um, we can stop if there are any issues. You can also uh, post your questions and we'll address them at the end of the webinar. Uh, and it is recorded, so you'll get the uh, the recording in your inbox in a in a couple of days. All right. Um, welcome, welcome. I see people joining in. Um, so today we are two marketers. Uh, Kemi, your guest. Please <laughs> take the lead if you want to, to tell us a bit more about your, your background and uh, why you're here today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, thank you so much for having me. I always love talking about marketing um, and getting into the nerdy details. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a multi-channel marketer who has managed an array of different, mostly food and beverage and service-driven brands in the Toronto, Canada. And my focus has been on group and multi-location growth strategies. Um, so I've spent about the past seven plus years working with various types of brands, and they've ranged from startups to those with long established histories within their communities. At the time of using the Click Data dashboard, uh, I was working with Archive Hospitality, which is a boutique hotel group that owns and operates uh, multi-property locations within Ontario. Cool, thank you. And um, I'm Axel. I'm the marketing director at Click Data uh, for almost six years now. Um, my background is mostly in, in the SaaS tech uh, space. Um, my, you know, I enjoy uh, working on, on demand generation and uh, making sure that marketing and sales are aligned um, to achieve business growth. Um, but my job today is to make sure it, to that you guys are taking away practical tips that you can apply to your own marketing analytics. Um, and finally, being able to shine at your quarterly report, uh, reports and meetings. Um, and we have quite an agenda. Um, so as mentioned, we marketers are um, the new revenue drivers, but we are still struggling to prove that uh, and answer the uh, the big LOI question uh, that our CEOs are obsessed about. Um, and uh, it's due to the complexity of handling multi-channel campaigns. Um, and we're going to see that through Camille's experience because the hotel industry takes it to a whole new level <laughs> of complexity. And the solution that we have in hand, in hand is unifying data, uh, not just marketing, but marketing with revenue and sales, um, which is the trickiest part. Um, and at the end of the webinar, you'll get a practical roadmap and checklist uh, to help you um, streamline your marketing reporting. So we, we said that um, we are the new revenue drivers. Uh, we are no longer asked um, for creativity or operational skills on not only um, we we have to handle data analytics and and um, not not so much as you know manipulating the data or transforming the data, but understanding what the data tells us, right? Um, and 
why is that? Why uh, has that changed? Uh, it's because the that's the way I feel, and can we, maybe you can uh, um, complement that, but um, the definition of, of performance, marketing performance, has shifted over the years. And we are no longer focused on driving traffic to the website, or this is not what we are objectivized on, right? We need to understand what happens throughout the, uh, the funnel, um, and, and we have to dig deeper than the first um, uh, the first metrics um, social media engagement uh, website traffic that's great but that's not what we are uh, focused on and mm -hmm. and that's not how we can answer that ROI question right um, and yeah. go ahead sorry yeah. to interrupt I was just gonna say I absolutely agree so as creatives the analytics are our currency um, and they're how oftentimes we're able to prove the need and still uh, the importance of all of the other creative elements of our job and why you know spend x amount of time on those other social strategies or on those more visually and content driven strategies um, and we use the analytics and the information that we drive from the the dashboard to make a case for those Absolutely. And that that's that's the um we, I mean the all why question. Uh we 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 see that across all emails and and, and content on LinkedIn, etc. Um you have to prove the ROI. Yeah, we all agree on that. But how do you do that? <laughs> um, is is the uh, the trickiest part again because you you have to um, uh, to to make sure that you not only you you have a consolidated view of your marketing channels, but what's the impact of of those channels on not only the conversions but on the revenue of your of your business. Um, and since you've faced those challenges, um, can you uh, tell us a bit more? about the struggles um, to report or to, to answer that ROI question in the uh, uh, hotel industry, Camille? Yeah, absolutely. So I was working with a relatively small in-house creative team and our goal was to build our own in-house agency model. And to do that, we needed to have a sense of efficiency, internal efficiency, um, but we also needed to ensure consistency in reporting. So after COVID, um, like many companies, you know, you face some turnover. And because of that, you're dealing with different data that's been reported on in different ways by different individuals. And so the dashboard was my key to creating something that we could use to manage all of our platforms. Hotels take that to a different level because, um, I mean, as compared to, say, maybe a food and beverage standalone restaurant um, because you're dealing with guest communications pre post during bookings you have your otas which are your online travel agencies um, and then you also have other travel tourism sites and we needed a place to streamline all of that data um, it also allowed us to consolidate and bring in um, booking information so while there are many platforms like your sprout socials or your hoot suites that can bring in twitter Instagram, what have you, it didn't also allow us to bring in our booking information, um, which is really where we're going to be getting that qualitative sales reporting. And you, you mentioned the, the few uh, different sources that you worked with. Um, how did you uh, report or, um, you know, to, to your management? How did you, what was the reporting situation back then pre to do that? So pre-click data, the reporting situation was uh, more of a quarterly reporting, but it was very manual. So mm -hmm. using things like Excel, pulling in all of your information, and then trying to kind of jump between platforms to ascertain what the larger story was that that information was telling you. By having it in one dashboard, it means that when I'm bringing on new team members, they're coming in at different even skill levels or experience levels. I've spent the time to really identify what those KPIs are. So they're looking at this composite now. That's like a, a more high level example mm -hmm. of or high, a high level story of what's happening with our locations. Um, and then through click data, you can also just easily export that consolidated report. 
So previously using Excel sheets, putting all of our information in there, and then using that information to then create a deck or something else that is more uh, presentation friendly. Yeah, and that, so the, the the highlights here, I think, is um, one, very manual. Two, you mentioned that it was done quarterly. So that means that if you wanted to have a monthly report, because uh, uh, we also report, you know, I'll take a look at the bigger picture on a quarterly basis, but we do need that monthly view, right? Because of course, yeah. No way depending on what depending on what the project is obviously you're going to look at something more immediately but i mean for yeah, larger decision making yeah we're looking at more on a quarterly basis and also the amount of time that goes into the translation of the data from the excel to a deck is not always something that you can do on a weekly or even monthly basis absolutely um I think that um, we need to uh, to explain a little bit what we mean by data unification uh, and not in general, but in marketing specifically. Um, it's the, 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 the process of unifying and gathering all the data uh, from the various marketing channels into a one data set uh, to build that comprehensive view of performance that what what you call the uh, the, the overall story uh, can be um, and um, and there are a different a few different steps that you need to follow uh, which are the uh, data collection um, again you have to make sure that all the sources are are, um, are brought into one central place uh, so that means that the tool needs to connect to all the the channels and that's one one of the challenges that you mentioned Kimi, with sprat social they connect data from social media that's mm -hmm. it yeah. um, you can bring in your <laughs> Uh, your information or uh, if you work with um, or in the in the b2b space from your crm or your your erp uh, that's not possible um data cleaning because the data is not cleansed <laughs> or it's it's not it's not clean when it comes in uh removing duplicates errors missing data then you have to transform <laughs> and consolidate the, the data sets to make sure that you have one actionable and ready to use uh, uh, tables, right? Data table. And then you 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 arrive at the uh, visualization part. Um, so you we see here that the data unification is not only data vis or building metrics. Um, it's it's actually a lot more and it does require a few data skills. Um, which are not not really within the uh, marketing uh, job description, but um, it does require that that skill set. Um, and um, just to uh, to make sure that we uh, tie everything together, um, what does that mean unifying data with click data in your experience, Camille? Yeah. So first, I would say that first things first is I start by doing. Um, a bit of an internal audit. So what are all the different platforms that you're using? Are some of them overlapping or doing similar things? And then identifying what the KPIs are from each of those platforms. Um, from there, it was important for me to look into those platforms and ensure that they were able to integrate with um, Click Data, which most of them were, which was, which was great. Um, and um, from there, the kind of setup was quite easy. I found as someone that's, um, you know, it, it, not extremely tech savvy, it was relatively easy to pull in each of those sources after being taught by the Click Data team that process. Um, and you on your dashboard have really nice segmented areas for your social and then your booking. Um, we use open table in the restaurant industry. I was able to select um, even which space because with uh, these properties, uh, there's different even restaurants within the hotel. So we're able to kind of toggle between which restaurants we wanted to look at. And then obviously set like our comparative periods mm -hmm. and within that one dashboard, you're able to see not only that section of time, but maybe you're looking at a year over year comparison or 
you know, same day sales um, comparison uh, all in one place. Perfect. And how did you um, handle the data transformation con consolidation um, on, on, on your project? Is that, um, is that something that you outsourced or with, with the services team? Um, in terms of uh, which particular platform, I think it depends um, on exactly which particular platform you mean. For most of them, it was relatively frictionless. Okay, perfect. Um, and while we were um, working on, on, on this webinar, uh, Kemi and I thought that it would be great to show you a couple of examples, um, a dashboard examples, um, just to illustrate what you could do uh, with click data and um, after the process of unifying all that data. Uh, so I'm just going to switch over to my screen. Um, can everyone see the dashboard properly? and read it. <laughs> okay, cool. So this is just an example of um, an, a social media overview because we've mentioned social media being, you know, you, you could have a um, uh, either four different tabs with LinkedIn, TikTok, and in Meta Analytics open or with your Sprout Social. But the the, the built-in analytics in those tools are very um, um, limited and not very flexible in terms of which time period you could look at or the uh, the different filters that you can apply. And here we can quickly see um, the um, not only the followers growth but also the engagement rate, the number of of publications and posts on across different channels and compare the impact on brand awareness and and um, um, and that across um, different accounts and different profiles so that could be uh, um, in the hotel industry um, per location um, or you could have a consolidated overview with all the hotels pages and accounts yeah I mean, it's it's obviously it's a sample dashboard, so um, the particulars are not uh, real information. But I think that it's still helpful to be able to see and the different platforms and and how you could lay them out, which is really up to you. You can move things around, um, you can change the colors, you can change the time sets, and really kind of customize it to your needs. Uh, whereas with other platforms, you know, you hit a lot of paywalls depending on how you want to specialize and customize that information, how far you want to drill down. You know, there are a lot of limitations, but with the dashboard, we were able to really just pick exactly how we wanted it to be, uh, which I found very helpful. Uh, let me switch. I'm switching just over to um, this package here. Uh, and I'll put it in full screen. Hopefully everyone can read it. Um, mm -hmm. And this is this is a, another example uh, not built by Kami because, you know, we keep data private and secure. <laughs> but this is just an overview of of what you could you could build for no tail industry uh, for no tail business. Sorry. Um, and um, as Kemi said, it's all about bringing all the metrics in one place and not having to switch between all the tools. It's a, a huge time saver. Um, and you can see here that you have not only the uh, the bookings, but also the revenue, um, the reviews on TripAdvisor. You could have Google reviews, et cetera. Um, and, and it, it's all in one place and you can drill down by location or uh, different times and time frames. Um, and there's one more dashboard I would like to show you guys is this one. Um, it's it's back to marketing. Um, this one is more for the uh, the SaaS uh, or more more B two B um, industry, but it could work. I mean, it's it's uh, it's flexible. It could work for the uh, B two C context um, because here we have clearly all the 
leads or it could be customers per marketing channels and sources. Um, you have all the leading KPIs right at the top with the golden metric, the ROI. It's fully dynamic. You can uh, um, um, you can play some what if scenarios uh, and 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 use the customer lifetime value to change those those values. Um, and whenever your CEO is asking what what is bringing me the revenue and the leads or the customers, which channels should we double dip, um, double dip on and invest on, you can have that that answer right away. Um, you don't have to to open fifteen tabs and 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 you know take fifteen minutes to to get to that answer. You can answer that with confidence, uh, and that's a game changer. Uh, not only for us, but for the CEOs. <laughs> yeah, I worked a lot with franchise businesses and one of the, you know, working for the brand on the brand side. And one of the services that we offer is obviously detailed reports to all of our stakeholders and the franchisees. And so something that they always want to know is how they compare to the other franchises within their same market. And so you're, you're sometimes limited by how much information you can share. But if I had had something like this early in my career, it would have saved me a ton of time in, you know, distributing 20 plus reports um, and, and creating each of those individualized reports. And then also being able to give them that background information on how they're comparing um, so much easier. Yeah. And, and on that side, I mean, on the distribution, I haven't even talked about the, uh, the, the sharing and the distribution of the dashboards. Uh, it could be through reports or, or PowerPoints as as you 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 previously uh, did, but it could be through uh, interactive um, live links and and you share the actual interactive live dashboards with up to date data, uh, or you could embed it within your portal if if you open a a kind of a um, client or franchise portal, um, and that's that's also a game changer for the end user because they can. It's a self service, um, you know, report and analytics, which is, um, um, yeah, it, it it saves time and and it's uh, it's much more efficient. Um, if you have anything else or nothing else to to say, Camille, you know, on the dashboards, we can switch over to uh, to the presentation. All good. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're almost at the, at the end of the the webinar, and um, we promised a a practical checklist. And since you successfully led the project uh, in archive uh, hospitality, um, do you mind? Walk us through uh, walking us through the, uh, the the different steps that you would recommend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so defining your marketing metrics. So to do that, again, I definitely start with a bit of an internal audit and speaking with stakeholders for any kind of sticking points. Um, you know, who are the the people that manage each of your kind of key systems. If it's not you, speak to them and figure out uh, where they are spending the most of their time. Um, and then checking um, before you even, uh, I, you know, as you're identifying the data, also checking with those platforms. Some of the platforms that I wanted to integrate were not willing to um, integrate, uh, such as your bigger bigger businesses like Expedia, but in some cases they were willing to meet us in the middle and give us raw data reports, which we then uploaded to a Dropbox and it was um, pulled into the dashboard automatically from there with the help of Click Data writing some code to do that. Um, so identifying the data and systems that you'll need uh, and then your KPIs, of course, um, centralizing and unifying the data to have a complete view of your funnel performance. The more you use the dashboard, the more accurate that it'll be. If it's something that you build and then you only touch once, hmm. you know, a month, that information uh, is not going to give you as much value as if you're in there working with it and identifying any potential issues or gaps. Um, like I said, things that can cause gaps or turnover or, uh, you know, inconsistent um, reporting. So you, at the beginning, will be sourcing from somewhere first. That might be your Excel sheets or that might be your Sprout Socials or the other platforms you've been using. Um, 
cleaning up that information um, and making sure it's as consistent as possible. Then we're going to centralize and unify the data to have a complete view of the funnel performance. Um, and uh, identifying your team in the dashboard review to ensure the data accuracy and increase adoption. So making sure everybody is, of course, on the same page. And um, again, if you have different people coming in at different skill levels, then having that director or head of the department be the one to really own the dashboard and uh, ensure that, that people are keeping it up to date is going to be important. Uh, making your KPIs and your dashboard evolve uh, with your business goals. So uh, the next step uh, for the archive team will be creating the next dashboard for the next property that they open. And um, that's going to be much easier now that the first one is built. The integrations are quite easy. Um, and making sure that that connection stays live is also very easy. It's a click of a button. It's just um, kind of a refresh. Mm. Great. Um, by the way, the uh, the screenshot that we see on, on the slide um, is taken from a, um, a data sourcing and and KPI mapping uh, blueprint that we uh, that we've built. So if you want a copy, uh, give me a shout after the uh, the webinar, and I'll send that over to you. Um, and and that's completely for free, and, and it's it's made for uh, to help you. Um, um, map not only the, the metrics, but uh, to give you um, um, which platform you need for to build those metrics, and you and sometimes it's uh, multiple platforms, and who's responsible uh, for that tool, and who's the admin of that tool, so that at least you 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 know who to to you know reach out to if you need uh, if the data is not correct or if you need more data for that platform. Um, so that, so that's it for us. Um, if you have any questions, I, um, we have one, um, can we ask if data assisted you in, in saving time, um, and money when it comes to social media advertising? And if yes, how? Um, I would say it's definitely a tool that can help you do that. Um, in terms of pulling in your information from social media, uh, it is not something that we were using it extensively for. Again, it was more so um, looking at our uh, overall kind of bigger picture um, information. But some of the um, some of the key points that you would be looking at are your engagement as compared to your web traffic as compared to your bookings um and as we know as marketers it's what you spend on a social ad in particular is not always going to translate in that exact number of bookings but that brand awareness that value you can better translate to you know your stakeholders by showing them this this larger composite okay well here we saw when we posted three times a day this is mm. our frequency this uh showed impact to our then web traffic and then we saw a spike in sales and being able to show that side by side for people that are not on the marketing team um it, it makes it even more clear for them yeah because there are so many side effects uh, in marketing that we can't. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> no, there, there's no. Sometimes there's no tangible um, um, data or metric that um, we can show um, and and say, well, yeah, posting three times a day did uh, uh, bring us have these many leads or these many customers or bookings, but we. If we uh, take a look at the website traffic and the engagement and the followers growth, then it becomes more clear that yes, mm -hmm. it does have an impact on, yeah. on yeah, the brand awareness and, and growing the business. Ultimately, if you don't see those results, like then yes, you will definitely save time because you'll know not to, mm -hmm. you know, expend as much time, maybe posting X amount of times a day and whatnot. Thank you. Um, no other questions?
thank you, Camille, again for your time, uh, for for telling us your story and and giving away so so many tips and and insights. Have a great yeah, day. <laughs> it's a pleasure chatting with you. Cool. Thank you. You too. And okay. uh, uh, have a great day, everyone. Everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye.